Making of bone broth. These are big old bags of frozen bones, see? Big old bags. Now you're going to look at this and you're going to go, yeah, you can't get any more bones in there. Ah, but I can, you see, because they're frozen together, which means there's air spaces between them, which will go away as they collapse with hot water. Watch them go. Watch this, huh? Watch it go. Oh, yeah. Too many dishes in the sink right now. <laughs> and only one hand to work with. Yeah, so as this starts to melt down, it will start to collapse down and make room for the last bag of bones. But I don't want it full on the, uh, I don't want it full in the sink, so I'm going to stick it on the stove. Um, I'll put it on the stove, I'll fill it with bowls of water, and I'll wait for it to gradually go down, and then I'll put the last bag in. So save your poultry bones, put them in a bag in the freezer, and when you got enough to fill a stock pot, you're going to make soup. You're going to fill this pot all the way, up to the rivets, and let it boil. And when it starts boiling, I'll show you, we turn it down to a simmer, and that's how it stays for three days, with occasional fill-ups of a gallon of water about every six hours, maybe eight hours. That's how you make bone broth. So, um, I've ferried water by bowl from the sink because I didn't want to carry the whole thing full of water. And I've managed to empty the last bag of bones in because they break apart as the water goes in, allowing you to mush them and mash them down. And uh, this will now be brought to a full boil. It is currently on my power burner setting. Uh, full blaze. And when it finally gets there, I'll move it to the back burner and put it on a three. Right now we're on that. It'll be put on the, it'll be put down on a three, just a little below three. But I'll show you that when I get there. What's this? What's this? Oh, she's boiling enough. Now what we do is we turn this burner off. We get the, we get the mitts and we move. It's probably stupid to do it with one hand. No, it's, it's level enough. Move the pot over to the back burner that uses less fuel than the... This one's bigger than the others, see? You can't clean that now, it's too hot. You can clean it later. So, I got dishes to do, I'll get to cleaning. And then we turn that down to just a little bit under three. And it'll stay that way for three days while you check periodically and add the extra gallon of water back up. I check. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a couple of times adding water. All right, it's bedtime. And uh, let's see, we've lost some water, not a lot, but since I'm going to bed, I'm gonna top it up. I don't adjust the heat. It heats up soon enough with just this little bit of water. Ah, you see all of the fat coming out? Yeah, I'm going to skim that off separately and uh, use it as, as frying fat and cooking fat and flavor adding fat around the kitchen. Yum, yum. Early in the morning, I've been up all night. That's how much water it... Well, I haven't been up all night. It's been boiling all night and that's how much water we've lost. As you can see, the fat's getting to be a darker color. The skin's starting to break down. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a nice one. Again, don't adjust the heat. It'll readjust after you put a little water in. It's that early in the morning. And here you can see what the simmer looks like when it's simmering correctly. You shouldn't be losing too much moisture into the air. You don't need to stir it. You don't need to do anything. Just leave it like this for three days and add water about three times a day. That's all you have to do. And uh, I'll show you when I add water again tonight. You can watch it progress. This is a soup in need of more water. It's been 24 hours or thereabouts at 7 o'clock. So I'll go fill a bowl and fill that water right back up to the rivets. Just dump it in. 
and uh, check it again at bedtime. So it's bedtime on the second night and uh, we're going to add a little more water. As you can see the fat's really taking on a rich color and I can tell you it smells delightful. Uh, put some more water in. <sighs> there you go. Day one and a half. So here it is, day two. A little bit late this morning, I slept in. There you go. It's really coming along. Tomorrow, I'll get the bones out. Today, we cook some more. Put in that water, put on that lid, and you can dip in with a ladle and um, get some of that broth. I recommend you go around, you skim off the grease, don't put the grease in your cup of broth. But you can, you know, when it's boiling there's a break in the grease. I'll show you later where you can dip in and have a nice cup of broth. Let's have us a nice cup of broth. We got our cup here, got some salt and pepper because you want to season it after, not in the pot. And right in the middle where it's boiling, that's where you'll get the least amount of grease. Oh, there's too much grease in that. You don't want a lot of grease in it. So find a spot where it's boiling, pull the broth from there. See, that's not too bad for grease. And this would be a lot easier without a phone in my hand. <laughs> Gotta hold that camera. Yeah, not too much fat. You can pour a little bit off. You don't want a lot of fat in your in your in your cup. It's too much, and it's really useful to pull off later. I think I'm going to get some of that fat out of there. Because fat floats, it's on the surface, you can skim it, you see. So by putting the ladle in part of the way and just pulling off the grease, you can skim the extra fat off the top and put it back in the pot. And yes, I did clean up the stove of all that spillage. There we go. So, just add some salt and pepper and drink that up as soon as it's cool enough to drink. Because remember, it's boiling hot right now. And the pot doesn't need any love for a while. I have to put water in in a bit. Alright, here it is, the eve of the last night, for me anyways. You can boil this another two days if you don't have time tomorrow to process it. I'm going to grab another bucket of water for that. If you don't have time to process it, you can boil this another two days. Now if at this point it smells bad or tastes bitter, then you've let it cool down too much, too often, and it's you throw it out. It's spoiled. However, if you've been keeping the, the heat on a steady simmer and you haven't been adding more than a gallon or so of water, it shouldn't be an issue. And uh, it should still smell and taste quite attractive. Um, it looks attractive, so I'm going to pot that up. I'm going to take all the bones and meat out tomorrow and I'll show you that process. But if you're busy the next day, you know, you can, you can boil it up to five days. After that, I find that the... Uh, the flavor goes bitter and it's just no fun anymore. Here's the second uh, bowl of water. I tend to use hot water for this because it doesn't make sense to cool the mix down spe especially much. Uh, tomorrow I will not add water because I'll be looking forward to boiling it down. Instead what I'll do is get the meat off and cool it. So it's morning of the day that I'm going to take the bones out so I'm not going to add water. It's a really nice rich color. Boiling more than usual. But uh, I'm going to actually turn it off and let it start to cool down. I'll put it out. Put it in the fridge, put it in the porch where it's cold. 
or if you're going to work on it in the next hour, you can leave it out on the stove. In my case, it's going to be two or three hours, so I'm going to put it out in my nice cold winter porch on the freezer out there where it can cool off. So here it's been out in the porch chilling. As you can see, it's not congealed at all. It takes quite a long time for a pot like this to cool down, but it will be a lot easier to handle. It's still warm here. And I don't need oven mitts to pick it up. So time to take it into the kitchen to the sink and start scooping out the bones and meat. I begin with the large wire scoop. Then when I've got all the large items out, I'll be switching to the mesh scoop to get all the small particles out. It usually interferes with fat collection, but there's not much to be done about that. So you want to drain that off as much as you can. Into the bowl. And uh, if there's too many bones and stuff, it's not really worth picking out the meat. But if you can pick out bits of meat from this, those are worth saving to put into soup later. So don't waste that good big chunks of meat. Go ahead and separate them from the bones and keep them in the fridge for making soup. And uh, what's left in this bowl will get put in the compost. Look at all that meat hiding in there. I realized I was going to lose a lot of broth down under the bone pile, so the bones are now going into a sieve. Big bones, little bones, fat bones, skinny bones, meaty bones, boiled bones, all boiled to powder. You could actually feed this to a dog because it's that soft that it, it'll just dissolve in their stomach. It's so soft, um, but I just don't have enough dogs to need to be feeding this to them. And continuing, you can see some really big chunks of meat there. I'll pick those out after I put the phone down. It's getting down to all the little bits. That means it's time to switch to the other tool. I don't get a lot of meat. A more frugal cook might keep the skin and uh, grind the bones and make other foods out of it. But i got a limit to my patience. Things you can make with um, less favorable meat include sausages and croquettes and meat pies. Ah, so you just keep stirring and stirring. You see the fat is still on the top and you want to let that fat run off the surface of the meat you're pulling or you'll lose a lot of the fat. So there's two ways to get rid of the, or to remove the, and separate the fat from your soup. One is to chill it until the fat congeals and then pull it off as a fairly solid mass. I don't want to take the time to do that, so I'm skimming it off the top and using a gravy separator to finally finish it. So to skim fat, you take a ladle and you sink it just below the level but not as deep as where you can actually see the difference between the liquid and the fat so you want to just suck the fat off the top and you just do this repeatedly pulling just the fat off the surface until it, there's so little fat that it's just too difficult to do and like I say I use a gravy separator because even as careful as I'm getting there will still be liquid in the bottom uh, not much you can't see it and that will pour off with the gravy separator. So just keep doing that until you uh, get all the fat off. I'll come back to you when I get there. The fat layer is beginning to get a little thin. I'm getting a lot of the underlying layer along with it. And I have to move around to different spots to pick up more fat in my ladle. I have to be much more careful about how deep I push the ladle. You see how all that grainy colored stuff is going in? That's not fat, see? But there's still a good eighth of an inch of fat on the surface to pull. This is a business of care, concentration, and patience. But as you can see, I have managed to acquire quite a bit so far, and in the bottom, you can see that the gravy separator is going to separate that off. Pretty much got to the point where I can't really get up any more fat and I get almost as much of the liquid at broth as I do the fat when I try. 
which is why I'm using the gravy separator. At this point, it can pretty much stay the fat that's in the soup, because you're not really going to get any more. So into the gravy separator it goes, and then the gravy separator, you see how the fat floats and the gravy sucks up on the bottom? Just gently pour off that gravy, boom. You're going to be boiling off the extra water in there. That's going to be called rendering. I'll show you that in a minute. So I've put the stock pot back on the stove. It's on the f high speed burner on high. And uh, I'm going to pour all of the fat into this little saucepan. And I'm going to turn the heat up on high there and let it boil and boil and boil as much as it wants, covered with a screen to keep the spattering in the pot. And when it stops spattering, all the water will be boiled off. And when all the water is boiled off, you have clean rendered fat that will keep in the fridge for several weeks, allowing you to use it for cooking. And it's a really nice flavor. This, I'm going to boil down until it's about, well, it's about here now. I'm going to boil it down to here. And then I will have a thick, dark broth that I make ice cubes out of. Okay, you can hear it sputtering and spattering. You see, and it's starting to boil. At this point, I'm going to turn the flame down to about medium because I don't want to start a fire. All that spattering stuff can overheat and catch fire. And you want to pay attention because when it's done spattering, you must turn it off or it may spontaneously combust. Fat is flammable. Keep a fire extinguisher handy, and if you ain't got that, a box of baking soda will get you through. You can also cover it with a lid if it goes off. The sizzling has gotten small and quiet. You pretty much got all the water off now. You can't just use a pot lid because you need something that vents the moisture, the steam. So I'm going to turn this off now and let it cool and then I'll pour it off into a container for the fridge. I will run it through a sieve when I do. Do screen that. I'll show you that too because why not. Now we're making coffee and this thing is making really disturbing bumps and thumps as it starts to boil. Again, don't put a lid on it. You want the water to evaporate off, not condense on the lid and fall back in the pot. Hooray! It's now at a full rolling boil with the steam coming off. You'll want to open a window because the humidity you get in the house is fierce. And uh, the gravy is cooling off, It's or the, the grease, this fat has to cool off a lot more. And then I'll pour it off using a screen, probably that ladle that I was using, I'll pour it off into a plastic container and put it in the fridge. And then that's the fat's done. That's all it needs. We've been boiling, sweating, and overheating the house for about two hours, and it's about half volume. I'm going to boil it down half again, and uh, then I'll put it up in ice cubes. The grease is still cooling. I think, in fact, it's ready to go into a t container, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that. Like I said, you want to sieve this going through to get any particles that have remained in the grease. So we'll just pour that off into the container. You can see all... Now what you can do with this is um, you can actually take that, you can rinse it off in your boiling broth until all that caramelized goodness is in your soup. Or you can fill this with water and throw in some vegetables and boil it up and have a nice little poultry vegetable soup with some of that meat you pulled off. So don't just wash that down the sink. That's flavor. Savor it. And there is our fat. Clear, golden, ready to go in the fridge. It'll last a few weeks if that's how long it takes to use. We usually go through it pretty fast. I fry eggs, I add it to broth, I add it to things for flavor. It's yummy. So I scooped up some broth and put it in. And I've got this little flat device. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape the bottom of this pan and put all that back in the broth. I don't feel like trying to make soup out of it and I don't want to waste it so I'll just put that back in and get some more do it again and repeat until clean 
so it's now thick and dark. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to let it cool. Um, in my case, I'll take it out in the nice cool porch where it will cool nicely and um, pour it off into a container. Yeah, so I'll pour it off into a container that's got a pour spout on it and leave it to cool uh, before I start making ice cubes out of it. So when you pour this off, there's still going to be little bits of bone and particles of meat in the bottom, so you want to pour it through a sieve into a container that you can pour more easily with when you're done. See, like that. So now I pour the broth into ice cube trays. I generally have to do two batches of this since I only have three ice cube trays and limited freezing space. But in they go. They go in the freezer. I take them out and put them into a Ziploc bag and make the next batch. Just fill those trays, get them in the freezer. I'll refrigerate the rest of the broth while these cubes freeze and then they'll just be emptied into a Ziploc bag so I can start the next batch. One way to use your bone broth is to make a little cup beverage, a little cup of soup beverage. There's a little water in the bottom there and some garlic paste out of a tube because why cut your own? Uh, a little bit of pepper. A bit of salt. Because you didn't put any salt in the broth so un other than the salt that was in the meat it's pretty low on salt. And that's a shortage of flavor. And you want to beat that garlic up then we're going to add three cubes of our bone broth and fill with hot water. Now it goes in the microwave for, oh, I'd say about 320 seconds, 3 minutes, 20 seconds, something, I don't know, till the ice cubes are melted and the soup is hot. And there you have it. Nice hot beverage. Good for what ails you. Other uses, you could just use it in a pot. That ratio of cubes to water. Throw in a bunch of cooked meat and uh, finely chopped vegetables or, or diced vegetables. Um, cook briefly just so the vegetables lose their edge. Serve it as soup. Add some herbs at the end. Get your flavor on. Throw it in your rice and make chicken flavored rice. Use it to season a sauce as the base for a sauce. Start a sauce with it. Have fun. Bone broth. It's good. What can you do with all that fat? Huh. You can fry with it, of course. Like frying up your bacon. You thought butter was the only way to do it. Ah, oh, this is tastier. Actually, much tastier. I like turkey bacon. The grease gives the turkey bacon that extra flavor that it's lacking when you're not frying up dead pigs. Look at that color. Cheers.